Happy New Year, everyone! I know it's February. I'm really sorry I haven't been able to upload. If you watch the video till the end, you'll kind of know why. Um, but for now, this video is about CVs because you guys have requested it. And what better way to start 2020 than a video about CVs and creative development? I previously mentioned that I've attended a workshop with an architectural hiring manager at one of the best firms in the UK, and she had personally looked at my CV and gave me some critical tips that. That I think are super useful. So in today's video we will be looking at my old and current CV, what I changed and why, and all of the tips that helped make my CV successful in getting my first architectural internship. So let's begin from the top. First thing you should have is your name and your contact info and this should be very clear. The blue banner that I had was kind of a design feature to go along with my outfit in the picture but she said to be careful with color because you never know how it prints in the office of your employer. And I have had previous Obviously, printers being so annoying and printing the wrong colors. So one way to avoid this is to make sure that all of the colors are CMYK in your Photoshop, Illustrator, or Word document, whichever program you are using. Now the other way is to completely avoid color, which I find bizarre. But she was a professional hiring manager with over 15 years of experience, so I can't really argue with that. Next is the profile picture. She said to avoid adding pictures unless you are 100% sure it's clear and professional image. She had explained that a person had applied with a profile picture holding a glass of wine, which sends off a wrong and professional image. Then later she had discovered that person was actually holding an award, but the image was not so clear. So you can expect that it caused confusion. So they decided to let this person go because of the inconvenience. Next is the profile where you give an introduction about yourself and your best qualities. This is quite easy to write because you are my friends and amazing. I do have a mistake here which is the hyphen between words because I like to justify my text. So to fix that you would need to add or remove a few words. Next is employment history which is basically any job that you have had that you were paid for. I did not include in the CV, unfortunately, any relevant experience which I was not paid for, which could be useful for the employer, such as volunteer work, any exhibitions, um, internship, and etc. Don't feel discouraged if most of your work experience is in retail and mostly academic work as the employer already expects that if you are an undergraduate. I was also missing a key sentence at the end which is what I learned from every experience because the employer care more about the skills that you've gained from those jobs. So for example, working as a part of a team, working under pressure, time management, talking and connecting with customers. You might think that these skills it isn't relevant to architecture but trust me it is. All of these skills can easily easily be transferred and applied to architecture. So next is education. For those who don't know, I have studied two years in Saudi Arabia before transferring to the UK. However, this CV makes it seem as if I had completed both of my studies or I had a double major. I have also not included what modules I had. Next is achievement which is self-explanatory. You might think that you don't have any, but trust me, you do. You just need to dig deep. You can also add any competitions you've entered, any awards, nominations, recommendations, maybe a mention in your university website or blog. One of my friends even wrote that she went on a site visit. I don't know if that's an achievement, but it could definitely be under relevant experience. So the column on the left, she didn't like very much because it felt squashed and not very clear. She didn't have any other comments on it except for my social profiles and she said that I shouldn't add that I have a YouTube channel unless I get 100% positive comments all of the time which is kind of impossible and kind of unrealistic and I don't agree with it but she was confused on whether to keep it or not as she had not seen any other student with an architectural YouTube channel before so I'll take that as a compliment so I just decided to keep it. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are all unnecessary. If you do add them you should check your profile and make Make sure it's professional because employers will take this opportunity to check your socials. So if you have images of you partying or with your friends, doing practical jokes, images of your cat, your meals, they're not so professional. So maybe those should be to friends only. What you should add is LinkedIn. And guys, I didn't really know LinkedIn was that important. So you really need to spend at least a few hours, if not a full day, to add as much relevant, useful information as possible on LinkedIn. You need to know that if you do decide to add an image to your CV, it should be exactly the same as the one in LinkedIn so that you're easy to find. 
In my hobbies, I wrote surfing the web, shopping, and taking care of my cat under the suggestion of my brother, who thought it would be funny and would kind of show my playful character. She did not think it was funny. So in my new CV, I removed all of my hobbies. I don't have any hobbies anymore. Unless you play the violin or write poems or read Shakespeare books for hobbies, I don't know if you should add them, to be honest. Last thing is the length of the CV. Considering I am an undergraduate, one double-sided page is the maximum. For the overall design, she said, since everybody's trying to stand out, sometimes it's nice to just read a nice and well-drafted CV. Simple and easy layout, no fancy graphics, just almost everyone who had kind of, let's say, an out there CV was kind of criticized. One girl, she had a CV. She designed a banner on top of the page so that in a pile of paper, her name will show. The manager said, if your CV is bigger than an A4, it will go straight to the bin without even reading it because they can't file it. So I felt so sorry for her, but I guess with CVs, you truly just need to keep it simple. So now let's look at the new and improved CV. It's simpler, clean layout. First thing, I changed my font from Bebas New to Times New Roman and Arial. One thing I forgot to mention is you should think of your portfolio and CV as a package. So in my portfolio, I had Bebas New as my font and in my CV, but now I've changed my CV to Times New Roman, so I should change my portfolio as well to Times New Roman. I've added my contact info, location, and my LinkedIn at the top so that it's easy to find. One mistake I did in my previous CV, which was adding my full address with postcode and everything, which was kind of a silly mistake. And I was thinking to myself, why would they need to know that I live in this flat, this street name, this postcode? So anyway, they just need to know the city you're in. On the right, I've added my LinkedIn QR code, which I can't take full credit for. A girl at the workshop, she had it and the manager just went crazy. And she thought it was such a genius idea. So I've added that to my CV. So if you want to add it to your CV, all you need to do is install the LinkedIn app on your phone. And if you click this here, you can see your own code or scan other codes. You can then share the code to yourself via email and then add it to your CV change my profile a bit to be a bit more personal instead of kind of a computer response that I had in my previous CV. My degree, which is architecture, I made it in bold to make it easy for the employer to know what degree I'm studying. I've also added what I learned from each employment and my relevant work experience. More skills and achievement with a bit more info to each and also the softwares I use. In education, I've also added the modules that I've studied and explained how I transferred and how my previous two years were considered as foundation. So reference is available on request. Do not add any names or phone numbers in your CV. You can't write the name of your partner, your cat, your previous employer, your sister, your mother, your brother, because your employer will keep your CV. They'll keep these files. If they want to keep someone else's name or phone number, they need to have their permission. So that means they have to contact that person and ask for permission to keep their contact info. So overall, I would say I prefer this layout a lot more than it, how it used to be. To be honest, the last one, I kind of had more effort and this one was just done in word maybe in a few hours it feels that it's more spread out there's more empty space there's a lot more info and detail which i think is more important than fancy graphics in my opinion the cv was a lot easier to write in word and then to make it in photoshop so i think it just gets a thumbs up for me so let me know in the comments if this video was helpful. Which layout was your favorite? Do you think that the first CV with icons and graphic was better? Or this one, which is a bit more simpler and cleaner? Also, do you have any more tips regarding CVs? Please let me know in the comments and help your fellow friends out there. If you guys stuck around to the end to know what happened, I'll kind of briefly explain what happened, but I'll explain in more detail in my next video. So be sure to watch that. So basically, sister visit me from Saudi Arabia. I haven't seen her for about four years. She was pregnant and she also had uh, a three-year-old girl. So I couldn't really spend so much time editing or working and also spend time on my uni projects because spending time with my sister was a lot more valuable because I don't know when I'll be able to see her again. And Reem, if you're watching this video, girl, I love you so much. 
and I miss you. Um, but you ruined my semester. <laughs> I'm just joking. So yeah, I couldn't really upload that much. And any time I had, I was trying to work on this project, which was so, so, so complex. It gave me so much stress and I literally felt like I couldn't breathe. I was running from uni work, running to doing other things, running to family, running to this. And really sorry, but I just did not have the time or any energy. But I hope I'll be back into it. I have three videos planned for this week. So we're coming back strong. I hope you guys are not too mad at me. Thank you so much for sticking around. I love you guys so much. I'm Rasha Shururu and I'll see you next time.